we'll get the, the formalities um, out of the way first of all and we'll get going. So I'm delighted to have you all here and welcome you to the online event, um, Social Media Savvy, so part of Enterprise Week 2022 um, in collaboration with the Dairy City and Strabane District Council. Um, just a reminder to everybody as well that this will be recorded. Um, so it will be available as well to watch afterwards um, if you wanna go back over some notes or anything. Um, so we'll, we'll move on into the slide now and we'll get started. Um, so my name is Tara Vidge and I'm the Managing Director of Highlight PR in Derry. Um, so I suppose just, just wanted to give you a wee bit of a background on me and the business first of all. Um, so I, I began uh, the business journey by bringing to market a free glossy magazine, Highlight Magazine. Um, so this is a publication that for the last seven years has been serviced in the region of the Northwest. Um, so the vision was clear from the get-go. Um, this was to be a publication that showcased events, tourism, culture and community within our city. And it could be found primarily in hotel rooms, tourist um, information points, city of Jerry Airport and local news agents. So this was going really well and I always kind of had a bigger picture for the business. I wanted it to have its own in-house magazine, but I also wanted to be able to provide PR marketing services and something obviously as, as part of why we're all here today that is becoming hugely popular at that time was social media marketing and I wanted to get there first. I kind of wanted our company to be the social media marketing leaders um, in the city, if you will. So um, what I want to kind of touch on first of all is a couple of topics that you would have read in the, the bulletin and things like that. Um, that's very important for us whenever we start working with a client, particularly a new client. Um, so your brand awareness. Um, I'm sure a lot of you that are on the call are quite familiar with brand awareness, but for anyone, you know, that's maybe starting out, but kind of just glaze over these. Um, so brand awareness is having a clear definition of your brand in terms of your image your logo, your brand guidelines, which will be your colors, shapes, tones, basically how people will see and how your customers will recognize your business. Um, so we believe that putting a strong emphasis on your brand awareness um, at the very beginning stages of the marketing, it will serve as sort of like an astonado for your business. It'll, it'll play harmoniously in the background for all of your campaigns and all of your marketing. Um, I mean, if you take into consideration some of the most popular brands out there, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, McDonald's, we automatically recognize their brands. Um, so, you know, that's that's where you want to be. You want to be at the case where you're putting an advert on social media, or you're putting a poster somewhere, you're putting something on your website and people automatically know who you are. So that's that's a wee bit about brand awareness. Um, demographics and your demographic data. So this is your desired audience. Um, I have a quote which I wanted to share with you all. Um, marketing demographics are groups within a population that are used in order to target market, create target market strategies. This may include factors such as gender, age, income, or lifestyle. So companies will offer goods and services that are aimed at reaching a specific group of people, and they will use business demographic analysis in order to see what groups make up the largest percentage of their business. So by targeting marketing demographics with sales and advertisements, companies can boost their sales, brand recognition, and customer base will multiply. So that for me really summarizes it quite well. Um, you know, if, if you don't know who your desired audience are or who your demographics are, then you need to find out basically um, everything you do in the business is for them. You're, you're promoting your products and your services with the, those people in mind. Um, now that can go off into, you know, a realm of tangents, one being psychographics where you know, you're really getting into the psyche of your demographic and your audience thinking, thinking about what they think in order to promote your product. But I, I won't, I won't delve too much into that today. Um, for me, what's mostly important is knowing your demographics because if you know them and you know where they are, then you're in a position to go out and look for them and reach them through your targeted business advertising. Um, so another wee thing as well before we get into the the social media platforms is. I firmly believe that with everything you do, 
to market and advertise your business, you have to have a call to action. So it's it's very common. And I've done it myself in the past where I'll maybe put up something for the sake of it or I think something is nice or looks pretty or it's a good idea, good quote. But it's always important to direct your audience because we're sharing that quote, not just because we like it, but because we think they might like it or they might come online, see our business, they might buy our products, they might want to find out more about our services. So always give them a call, call to action. So, for example, if you're posting something about International Women's Day, I know we all, um, especially the, the ladies um, on here, we've all been doing quite a bit of posting on International Women's Day. It's a great, you know, it's a great camaraderie between women, but you also want to specify what you do. You know, why you're posting that, is your business geared towards women? Are you supporting women? Is it something that, you know, that might interest them specifically? If so, maybe pop a wee link to your website or, you know, let them know that you're doing, you know, a seminar or a talk or you're going to come on live. Just give them some sort of a follow up so that they, they're they not just saying that and think it's a pretty ad. You want them to see it and remember you and have some sort of an engagement with you after. So what we will do is we will move on now to social media and its different forms. On our next slide here, uh, you should be able to see some of the icons for various social media forms. We just skip on to the next one, sorry. So social media has become the number one marketing medium throughout the world. And honestly, there's just so many different ideas there's different channels everything is being adapted and changed as we speak so it's it's hard to keep on top of them all but what I kind of like to do is I like to go in there first with you know the ones that are more prominent so for me and what I say to most of my clients the primary forms of social media are Facebook Instagram Twitter and LinkedIn so it's very important to understand the function for each social media platform. Um, you might have to tailor your advertising campaigns around them. So I'm going to touch on the function of each of these platforms and how your marketing will be detailed in order to serve the business more efficiently. Um, so you may do one thing on Facebook, you may do another on Instagram. And hopefully this explains to you why. So Facebook itself has 2.9 billion active users on its platform so it, it's a platform that serves really well for both personal communications and business um, the realm of Facebook as I say it, you know it's it's been developed exceptionally well for business uh, you see that maybe over the last three to five years where you know that they've adapted its functionality to suit businesses specifically um, businesses that want to promote themselves using Facebook so the conception of marketing and publishing tools I know some of you on here will be used to seeing them. You might be using them already actively, or you might see the, the options there and you don't know what to do with them next. So what that is, is Facebook have designed this specifically for business. They want you to use their platform in order to market your brand. So obviously, you know, they have paid for advertising um, for that purpose as well. So when users, if you think back to way back when, when you first maybe opened your personal Facebook account, um, when, when we sign up, we're putting in our age, sex, location, hobbies, interests, where we work, where we like to travel. We are making our information so accessible to the World Wide Web. And Facebook know this and what they have done is intelligently, you know, find a way to input this information. And then it's stored. And that's information that we as businesses have access to. So we, we touched on demographics there. Facebook are giving us access to this information readily. Um, let's take, for example, a process of doing a sponsored ad on Facebook. So you could, you could say, right, listen, I'm going to spend 40, 50 quid this month on Facebook advertising. Um, so you can go in. You're going to have a nice graphic, something that represents your business well, keeping to your brand guidelines. And you're going to put a good caption and your call to action in there. So we we get our artwork we go and we sign our budget and the next part is really really detailed and you know that that's something that really excites me and I see how well it works for business so we're able to input what age group we're looking for what one we're targeting what gender what geographical region and even their interests so if for example I am a slimming company 
and I have a product that I'm selling for females between age 20 and 55 and I want that to be in Northern Ireland I can put this all into my ad so that ad isn't being pushed towards males in Donegal it's specific to what I'm after and what's more is Facebook actually keep really good track on this for you so if you want to have a wee look and kind of see how the performance of this is going you'll be able to see how many people your advert has reached how many people have engaged with it what days what times are more popular than than others and so on and so forth so that's that's really good because we do need to you know have a wee bit of trial and error we can't just go on there and automatically assume you know right everyone's online on a Sunday let's go for that that is the case with a lot of people but you're better trying and testing what's best for your business and your products so the business tools that we are accessing they're, they're phenomenal it's, it's convenience marketing and it's there so that our audience is much more accessible to us so we, we could talk here for hours and really get into the nitty gritty of every wee tool that's available for a business. But um, I, I won't keep you that long. I'll get through everything else. But Facebook is just really desirable. It's the top one for me. Whenever I start working with the client, I'm going to go on straight away, look at their Facebook, see what they've been doing. And that's where we will begin to make our, our changes at the, the beginning. So um, because of its readiness to give us all of the data that we need, the ability to support business owners and, you know, in terms of their setup tools and their schedule and the posts, which we'll touch later on as well in the presentation, um, you know, I highly recommend it. And I use it for all of my clients. I've been using it for my business since day dot. And, you know, the response is there to be seen. It, it works fantastically well if you use it right. So we'll move on to Instagram or the gram as the millennials are calling it these days. So uh, this is where you'll find the home of all the major players in your industry, uh, the influencers, the household names. So there's the ability to share not just your posts, but you can create like video reels, which have become really, really popular. It's like a similar function to TikTok, if, if you are familiar with that, where you can go on, you can make a video, you know, it, a lot of them have humor and emotion attached to it. A very good marketing tool that's built into Instagram for you to use. So you are similarly to Facebook. You're able to find your demographics in Instagram as well. Um, you know, again, we're, we're just giving this information out as, as humans these days. We put in our hobbies, gender, interest. Um, but the only thing is Instagram works a wee bit differently to Facebook. It is a popularity show. It really is. Um, you'll find your influencers here and, you know, it's people led, people buy into people. That's the thing with Instagram. So um, I want to give you an example. Uh, if you buy if you buy a pair of jeans, let's say, um, and th this influencer, she's got 25,000 people follow her page. They love to see what she's eating, love to see what she's doing, and more importantly, what she's wearing. So you've gone and you've bought the jeans that she's, out, she's had up there. So you're, you're putting up your photographs of you wearing the jeans and how popular they are. You're getting your follows and your likes. But the minute an influencer like her or someone that's even more popular puts up the TikTok leggings, your jeans are completely forgot about. So that's how it is with your advertising on Instagram. You have got to remain relevant. You need to really, you know, stay on top of things. So adapt adaptability is key for Instagram concerned. And of course, the hashtags, which I've mentioned, we will discuss later on. Um, hashtags, make sure that your content's relatable and that you're reaching who you want to reach. So one we noticeable thing, I'm sure if you're Instagram users, you'll know um, is not just, you know, you're not just posting on your wall, you have your personal stories as well. And, you know, somehow this, this is more popular than the posts itself on your grid. Um, I think it used to be hugely popular to make the grid, but the life story is all happening on the stories. And so that's where I think Instagram comes in really handy. Um, you can design, similarly to Facebook, a wee ad for your call to action, and you know you can put it up there but you can do sponsored advertising as well where you can you don't have to spend a lot of money just to sign a budget and that will go up again and put your you know your key demographics your gender the area you're sort of trying to target and obviously your adverts showing a wee bit about the product or service that you're offering so that will come up you know you're scrolling through stories of influencers and your friends and the adverts will pop up you see them every day and it does work 
and everyone is posting about their lives. So that is where you need to be. Um, th there's a lot of really popular accounts on Instagram, some local businesses as well, where there's a there's a young lady in Mahra Felt. She has a, a business there, maybe I think it's eight or nine years, maybe a bit longer. And her business is fantastic. Great brands, great service, great quality. But everything that goes down is going down on her personal Instagram page. So she has her business page, which goes quite well. But the following is all on her page. So, you know, businesses would reach out to her, ask her to promote their product, mention their product. Literally, all, all the girl has to do is put up a photograph of something that she was gifted and everyone's going to buy it, you know, because there's a lot of value placed on these influencers and on the, the industry leaders that are on Instagram. So that's more so the way that works. You can push your business, you can, you know, educate your, your clientele, go looking for them, but you do have a wee bit more pressure to remain relevant and keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. So let's move on to Twitter now. Twitter is home of the hashtag where it all began. Um, so with more than 1.3 billion active users, uh, Twitter for me has a lot of news, current affairs. Um, I work in a solicitors as well um, a couple of days and we use Twitter a lot. Like it's important for us to be sharing legal news and content, immediate changes to the law. We want to you know, keep on top of all that. So Twitter is important just to see what's going on. Current trends are dictating you know, the market in terms of law and law news, tribunal cases, that kind of thing. You will find a lot about that on Twitter. Um, if you have a small business, large corporation, whatever it may be, and you want to be, you know, in the know for current affairs and social economic developments, you're going to be on Twitter and you can retweet, you can hashtag, you can piggyback, so to speak, on something that's happening. If you see something that's really relevant to your business or what you do, retweet it, add a wee bit of something to it, get your hashtags in there and you're on that stream. You know, you're going to be seen by the people that are also interested in what you're posting. So that's that's where Twitter really works well for me. It can get quite heavy in terms of news content, politics, um, things like that. It depends on your, your personality and your business, but I tend to advise clients and I would always do this myself. I would stay away from the the political elements of things I wouldn't get too roped in you know I don't think it's good for your business reputation so I think a good healthy flow of content positive news where possible but of course by all means if something is relevant you know get sharing and get your business involved in there but there's ways of doing everything in a tasteful manner so that you know you, you're not seen to be always pushing your political views down someone else's you know throat that that kind of thing so don't let yourself get too lost in it because it is easily done but um it is easy to reach your audiences with the the hashtags twitter doesn't it doesn't always require you to put in like your name you can go in there on your username so it's hard, like it's hard for you to do target marketing on Twitter whenever, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of people you're trying to reach all go under some name that, you know, you're not able to identify with or, you know, if they don't have to input their gender, that kind of thing. So it makes it a wee bit more difficult to, you know, specifically pull out your key players, but definitely good if you want to stay relevant in terms of what's going on in the, the, the current media. So we'll move on now to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of my absolute favorite platforms for business. Um, 756 million users worldwide. Um, so if I want to reach a company or an organization, people in a certain career field, this is where I go because this is where they're all at. LinkedIn is it's home to users of all levels um, from each industry and organization. You'll find, you know, you'll find interns, junior staff, senior staff, management, CEOs of major corporations. They are all on LinkedIn and they are all using it actively. Um, so it's an ideal platform if you're wanting to get, you know, past the gatekeepers, so to speak. Um, I've seen it happen for a lot of people. They're constantly ringing secretaries, trying to get in touch with a company owner or a senior member of management. And they just go to LinkedIn and they think, you know what, I'm going to try here get to know them, maybe send them through something, they might give it a read. So it, it, it can do that. Um, there's 57 million businesses and companies throughout the world. They're all listed on LinkedIn. Um, another good function of a friend, if you're on here and you're, you're going to be doing recruiting 
um, or you're looking to you know find work for yourself as well it's a huge huge drive for recruitment um, you know if I'm if I'm looking for a glimpse into a potential employee um, in terms of their work, you know, I'm not going looking on their Facebook page. I don't want to know what they did at the weekend. I want to know how they conduct themselves professionally. And that for me sometimes is, is available on LinkedIn. So if I'm going to hire a business development manager for highly PR, I want them to hit the ground, you know, really go out there, go after businesses, try and recruit more people in terms of social media marketing clients. I want to know if they're well connected. I want to know if they, you know, they have the quality connections, which I think is important on LinkedIn. Uh, I mean, you can do primary connections, which are your first, that's people you know. Uh, you can get secondary connections, which may be someone you know through a primary connection and so on and so forth. But, you know, I, I might look at their LinkedIn and think, right, so this could be my new business development manager. How many people are they connected with? Are they connected with the relevant businesses? Are they, you know, sticking to the relevant fields? It doesn't matter to me if they have 5,000 contacts on LinkedIn. It matters to me if they have 5,000 contacts, and maybe three or 4,000 of them are quality, you know, people that we can potentially do business with. Um, so that's really, really good for, for that kind of thing. So that's a summary of the four platforms that I think are fantastic. I'll put a wee notable mention on there for TikTok because I use it quite a bit, but I know it, it can be quite controversial as well. So it's not the go-to whenever I'm working with a client or for myself personally. Um, it's a bit of a laugh and a bit of crack sometimes. And um, sometimes it does work for your business. Sometimes it doesn't, but there we go. If we move on now to the next slide, and um, we're just gonna have a wee look at what we do as a business in terms of what we can do for you. So Highlight PR offer packages that are tailored to the client. No two services are the same for, for clients. Um, as I'm sure many of you will know, social media marketing, it's just not a one size fits all. So we work with you the entire process from, from the beginning right through. Um, we'll assist in the necessary elements. Some business come just with a key, you know, brand guideline. They have all of their brand awareness in place. Uh, they just need social media marketing and they want to know where to go next. So the, the huge factor for us is that clients do know a lot about social media marketing and they know what they want to do, but they don't have the time to execute it. And that's something we we help with. You know, we can step in, we can take we're managing your account. We manage it collectively with a lot of clients. So we have a social media marketing strategy. Um, we get it designed. I probably do the copywriting. We we'll get someone that's going to schedule it and get it posted out there. But the clients are also posting their own content as well. So, you know, that ownership and control does never come off you completely. You know, we're still doing that as well. So some businesses might come to us and say, you know, we, we want to rebrand. That's an option. You get people to think, God, I want to start a business. I'm at my infancy. What can I do? We do, you know, offer consultation and mediation in terms of starting your own business um, throughout the pandemic. On the year one of the pandemic, we were offering the business boost program, which is basically people got some of the people in business years and the pandemic cut and they had to revert you know and that's a huge part of what enterprise week is about this year is you know that growth and sort of reinventing of everybody's brand getting yourself back out there and growing your business so we enjoy being a part of that you know it, it was really good for us so that's what we do we offer pr marketing event management but social media marketing as our forte so to speak so next slide we'll move on to now is Posting strategy. So posting strategy for me is so, so, so important. Um, I get really irritated whenever I see a lack of planning and it's just because it's such, you know, you put your time and your passion into creating a good ad and to creating your caption, you know, call to action, but you need to have a wee plan in place. You know, at the end of the day, you're not doing this just to Hope that someone will notice your advert in a stream of thousands of adverts that are going out every day. If you have a plan of action and a strategy, it really will work. You know, th there's just so many different different kinds. As you can see there from the slide, um, what I try to do is I form a, I form a plan with informative uh, posts. 
engagement posts Bard Authority offer and value. So I like to mix it up and keep it a wee bit different. So let's take, for example, an informative post. Um, you can pop up what your opening hours are. Here's where you'll find us this weekend. We'll be there from Monday to Friday, 9 to 10. Give us a call, pop your phone number up there. That's your call to action. That's a good, well-rounded post, given the audience information and you've got your number up there. You might go out then uh, the next day and do an engagement post. So engagement is soul destroying whenever you're trying so hard to put posts out there and nobody is commenting or liking or you know giving you something to work with. So in an engagement post, it's normally when you build up, you know, that wee bit of a you know confidence and following on your social media, you put something out there, ask them a question, you know, which one of our products would you like to know more about? Or let's say you're a company that's selling something, terrible products for, you know, for energy, for people that want to have high performance, more energy throughout the day. You'll come out with a question and say, how many of you are suffering from lack of energy? Something like that will just, you would be un, unbelievable how many people will engage with that. They might like a comment. You know, that's your opportunity to engage with them. So if they say, God, I do, or, oh, I don't get sleep, or, oh, I'm, you know, nocturnal or whatever that's your opportunity to swoop in there and say well we have a product for you would you like to know more about it or just give them a wee link to your website that'll take them straight to the product read about it themselves that engagement is everything um it does take a wee bit of work you know as a business owner to engage but it's well worth your while whenever you put the time into it um so borrowed authority this is a big one. And this is where you'll find some people have a huge lack of call to action. Um, I might share a Bob Proctor quote and it's a good quote. People might, you know, might relate to it, but why am I sharing it? I'm sharing it because I want you to notice me. I want you to notice my page. Notice I put the quote up there. I might put my website link underneath or I might put a wee thing in the comments that's directing me towards my product or service. Just, you know, you're borrowing that from someone else. So make sure you always give them the credit for it. You know, the last thing we want is to put up a, a Bob Proctor quote and put our own name underneath it. That just, I don't think it would fly. Um, so the best thing to do is be putting it up, quote them, like, for me, I would share news articles quite a lot, um, especially in the solicitors. And it's so important. Like if I'm reading something from The Guardian and I'm going to share that with, you know, reader, I need to make sure I'm saying it's from The Guardian or best believe at some point you'll have a lawsuit. So just always be careful with borrowed authority, but definitely put it out there because you can use the hashtags then for, you know, Bob Proctor or Proctor Geller. And shit, if you're using a yeah, quote from them, you can use hashtags or at the Guardian. You'll be surprised who you will see your post in their mainstream because you have appropriately tagged or used hashtag, which we are common to, by the way, because I know a lot of people want to know more about that. So we move on now to the next slide. Um, very briefly talk to you about Linktree. So this I want to make relevant to Instagram. So Linktree is the link in bio solution that links audiences to all of your content. So I get a lot of clients coming to me. They maybe have a Facebook and Instagram set up. And they're saying, you know, I, I want to direct them to more than one place, but I don't want to sacrifice my website. So Instagram will let you post one website in your, you know, that about you section in your bio. So if you set up a link tree, put that in your bio, you basically go on to this wee, this wee page. It is so, so easy and straightforward to use. Set up a link tree. You can put in your website, a product page. You can put in, book a call with me endless amounts of links and I just wanted to put that on because I know a lot of people struggle with you know what you can't post on your normal post on Instagram and put a link there it doesn't allow it like Facebook would you know you can just kind of click on the link um, it's important to put that on there so link on bio is such a useful tool and you know if anybody ever wants a wee bit of guidance on using these please just pop me um, a wee message or an email or something contact us on our social media pages we're on all the platforms and we'll be happy to show you it's very straightforward um so we'll move on again now just to the next slide um because I've had a lot of people kind of ask me um about hashtags and what to use and how algorithms work and this kind of thing so the algorithm world is changing every single moment of every single day. There's just no way of predicting it. So what we have to do is we kind of have to think, 
what's what's my purpose today? Am I doing an information post or an engagement post or borrowed authority? You know, do that. And at the bottom, you get some hashtags. So what happens there is that let's take, for example, Instagram. So the hashtag pages will link you in. So if someone is into health, fitness, nutrition, well-being, weight loss, whatever it may be, they will be on following those pages you know that are relevant to that hashtag so if i'm promoting a slimming product and say i've got a brand new chocolate bar here 99 calories excellent for weight loss high energy i'm going to think right what are the people that i'm looking to attract with this so i'm going to go towards hashtag now there is a wee app it's called the hashtag expert i'd recommend everybody to install that onto your smartphone it is so so handy you can go on there and say, right, I, I work for a slimming company or, you know, I want to post a product on weight loss. It will literally give you all of the hashtags that are relevant at that moment in time where, you know, we could post yesterday and say hashtag weight loss, hashtag get fit. But tomorrow it could be hashtag on your way or five pounds off or five in a day, whatever it may be. That we app does it all for you. It keeps, it keeps an eye on the trends and how much the algorithms are changing. And so I use that a lot. Um, nine times out of 10, you know, you kind of know if you're putting in hashtag PR, hashtag marketing, hashtag social media marketing, I go on and I'll look right, what's trending? That's a big word, especially on Instagram and Twitter. What is trending this week in terms of fitness or in terms of marketing, social media marketing? That we app will give you whatever you need to know. And you put those hashtags at the bottom of your post and I assure you, people you wouldn't even have reached normally, you they will be seeing your posts and that's the function of them. And that's how important and instrumental they can be. Um, I'm trying to think, is there, I, that, that wee app is the main thing there. Um, it's just about keeping you relevant. That's, again, as a touchstone with Instagram, keeping relevant and keeping up with the Joneses. It just changes so much. And it's a lot of pressure on businesses. That's why you know, a lot of larger businesses and companies would have marketing people and social media marketing people in place. They can do that for you. It's part of what we do here. We have to take that off people because they're tearing their hair, trying to run around, manage staff, manage premises, deal with their admin and their bookkeeping, you know, social media marketing. If you want your business to succeed nowadays and grow your clientele and your return on investment, that's what you need to be doing. You need to keep on top of it. So we'll move on again now to our next slide. Um, just to kind of show you a few of the brands that we've been working with. Um, so it, it just grows year on and year out. These are some of the newer brands that we've worked with now in the last six to eight months. Um, some of them, you know, reinventing their brand from the very beginning. Um, some of them that have been well established, but they just needed that wee bit of a facelift. So as you can see, we did like an analysis uh, of performance. And the growth from 2020 to 2021 was an increase of sales of 80% on average, and then an increase of 60% following on average across all of those brands. Um, that's something that I'm really proud of personally. I know the team, you know, that work, they work really well here um, on putting everything in place. So we're just so proud to see those results, happy for the clients. That's what keeps them, you know, with us. That's how we retain them. But as you can see it's through all of the work that we implement that we've been chatting about knowing our social media marketing avenues knowing how to best navigate them i think design's a huge part of you know making sure as a touched on brand awareness making sure that you know you're not chopping and changing your colors and your tones all the time get a good clear definition of your brand the more people see it the more they know what it is the more they're expecting it and that's what we've been doing with these clients and in such a short space of time you know I, I can't wait for some of these newer brands to see how they have increased as well you know because some of them have we haven't even had with us a year so you know those results are kind of based on people that have been with us a while so it'll be great to see um, where, where things take them so I think um, just on the last slide now, I wanted to just thank you all for taking the time out to come on and listen to me. I hope that I've helped someone in some way. Um, we are taking questions in the Q&A box at the bottom. Um, I think Danielle's going to have a wee look. If, if you want to write in a question, please do, and I'll answer it here for you. Um, anybody that doesn't want to do that, you want to get in touch, just drop me an email or a message at any time. 
and I'll be more than happy to come back to you and talk a wee bit more about any of the, the topics we've touched on today. Thank you very much for that, Tara. Um, You're welcome. Very informative session and much appreciated. Um, I think we have one question, just bear with me to see. Um, so that's someone just saying, not a question, but thank you very much for the helpful information. And I think that goes for everybody who's online today in terms of, um, I think we've all got something from it in terms of social media, as you say, it can be a minefield. Um, so it was great to get your expertise today on that, Tara. If there are any other questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A box or into the chat and we can deal with them now. Or as Tara has said, we can, we can also take them offline and direct you through to Tara after the session today. Yes, someone's just asking, are we recording? And yes, we are. Um, so if you have missed any of today's session, it will be available online. And the address for that is www.dairystraban.com and then forward slash enterprise week. You'll find all of the information, um, including any recordings from this week on that particular website. And it's just gone onto the chat box there if anybody wants to take a look at it. Okay, everybody, um, I think that's us. Um, just a thank you to the audience for joining us today as well. It's great to see so many of you online um, as part of Enterprise Week. So we're now on day four of Enterprise Week. Friday is our last day, so there, um, there are still some events taking place this afternoon and tomorrow. So if anybody wants to take a look at the schedule for what's still to come, um, feel free to do that. And thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Tara. Thanks thank so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel, for the opportunity. All right. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.